Welcome to the world of M.A.S.H., a television series that left an indelible mark on the landscape of American entertainment. Have you ever found yourself transported back to the chaotic yet endearing world of the 4077th Mobile Army Surgical Hospital? Perhaps you recall a cherished memory associated with this iconic show, or can you pinpoint the first time you tuned in to witness the antics of Hawkeye Pierce and his comrades? MASH, born in 1972, unfolded against the backdrop of the Korean War, blending humor and humanity in equal measure. The show provided a unique lens through which viewers could reflect on the complexities of war and the resilience of the human spirit. Its witty banter, memorable characters, and poignant moments created a formula for success that resonated with audiences for 11 seasons. Now, let's delve into some random facts that add layers to the MASH narrative. Did you know that the series finale, Goodbye, Farewell, and Amen, remains one of the most watched television events in history, drawing over 105 million viewers? It's a testament to the show's impact and the connection it forged with millions of households. As we explore the nuances of M.A.S.H., we're eager to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this timeless classic. Share your stories and reflections in the comments below. Your connection to M.A.S.H. is as vital as the show itself. So, whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer curious about this cultural phenomenon, join us in celebrating the legacy of M.A.S.H. and the memories it continues to create. In the early 1970s, the TV series based on the Korean War, primarily set in a mobile army surgical hospital, gained widespread popularity. Notably, the 4077th MASH Camp, featured in the show, was filmed at what is now Malibu Creek State Park in California. Once known as the Fox Ranch, the site, marked by a rusted jeep and an ambulance from the series, is open to the public. A 2018 brush fire impacted the location, but remnants endure, preserving its historical significance. Adding a personal touch to the series, the character Klinger, known for his quirky antics, married his childhood sweetheart, Laverne Esposito, while stationed in South Korea. The unique ceremony, officiated by Father Mulcahy over shortwave radio, showcased the series' blend of humor and heart. Notably, Klinger's wedding dress, worn on two separate occasions by different characters, weaves a distinctive thread through the show's narrative, connecting characters and episodes. The series, beyond its captivating characters, provided a glimpse into the filmmaking industry. The Fox Ranch, where MASH was filmed, had previously hosted other notable productions, including How Green Was My Valley and Planet of the Apes. This shared space underscores the versatile history of the location and its contribution to the cinematic landscape. In conclusion, the 1972 TV series MASH not only delivered humor and drama against the backdrop of war, but also utilized a real-world location that now stands as a testament to its enduring legacy. The intertwining of personal stories, quirky details like wedding dress exchanges, and the historical backdrop of the filming location contribute to the series' timeless appeal. In M.A.S.H., Major Margaret Hotlips Hulihan's personal life adds intriguing layers to the character. Notably, her parents exchanged unique gifts in various episodes. In Season 3, Episode 2, she gave Major Frank Burns a silver gun from her father to her mother. This recurring theme includes a cavalry riding crop and a silver flask, showcasing a distinctive aspect of Margaret's character. The show featured actors in dual roles, adding an interesting dynamic. Stuart Margolin portrayed two characters across the first and second seasons, both romantically entangled with Major Julian. Other actors like Oliver Clark and Tim O'Connor, as well as John Orchard, returned in different roles, contributing to the series' diverse character interactions. Hawkeye's aversion to guns, despite military regulations, is another noteworthy aspect. While serving as officer of the day, he refused to carry a sidearm. However, Colonel Potter's insistence led to a rare occurrence where Hawkeye wielded a pistol at an aid station, reluctantly following orders and firing into the air. These details provide a glimpse into the depth and complexity of M.A.S.H. beyond the humor and drama, showcasing the unique traits and relationships of its characters. The series, known for its portrayal of the Korean War, extends its appeal through such nuanced elements, creating a timeless legacy in television history. The TV series M.A.S.H., which ran from 1972 to 1983, holds some intriguing facts that add depth to its characters and production. 
Notably, Frank Burns, a key figure in the show, sported three middle names throughout his time on screen. W. Marion. Indeed, this quirky detail sheds light on the complexity of characters in the series. Adding to the dynamics of the cast, David Ogden Steers, despite being portrayed as older, was actually younger than main actors Alan Alda and Mike Farrell. Born in 1942, Steers contradicts the show's depiction of him as an elder, showcasing the interesting age dynamics among the cast. Beyond the characters, the show's journey in terms of popularity is noteworthy. The first season, despite being the starting point of the series, had the lowest ratings, finishing at number 46. In contrast, the 11th and final season achieved the highest ratings, finishing at an impressive number 3. This trajectory underlines the evolving success and enduring appeal of the show. These facts contribute to the multifaceted nature of M.A.S.H., offering insights into character intricacies and the show's evolution over its 11-season run. Such details, alongside the previously discussed elements, enrich the legacy of this iconic TV series. This show became a huge hit in India after it was broadcast there in the 1990s, when cable television was introduced in India. It continued to be broadcast on weekday evenings at 6 p.m. for all of its seasons. In the 1990s, the iconic TV series found an unexpected but fervent following in India. The introduction of cable television opened the door to MASH, turning it into a massive hit. Airing on weekday evenings at 6 p.m., the show's popularity endured throughout all its seasons. The humor, drama, and unique dynamics of the 4077th MASH camp resonated with Indian audiences, leaving a lasting impact on the country's television landscape. Wayne Rogers, known for his role as Trapper John in the iconic TV series, was originally set to screen test for the character of Hawkeye. However, a twist of fate led him to reconsider. Feeling that Hawkeye's cynicism didn't align with his preferences, Rogers opted to audition for the role of Trapper instead. This decision shaped the dynamic of the show, with Trapper John bringing a more positive and outgoing vibe to the 4077th MASH camp. As the series unfolded, the producers took a unique approach to storytelling. They began interviewing actual MASH veterans, incorporating their real-life experiences and impressions into the show's plot lines. This infusion of authentic accounts added depth and realism to the narrative. However, over time, the pool of fresh ideas gradually diminished. The decision to conclude the series was influenced by this evolving challenge, marking the end of an era in television history. Hawkeye, a central character in the series, revealed the origin of his nickname. It was derived from his father's favorite book, The Last of the Mohicans. On the other hand, Trapper John's nickname remained shrouded in mystery until an amusing explanation surfaced in M.A.S.H. itself. According to Hawkeye, Trapper was caught with a woman in the ladies' room of a Boston main railway car. The unexpected interruption by the conductor led to the memorable exclamation, Oh, he trapped me. Oh my god, he trapped me. These behind-the-scenes insights into character origins and the show's creative process shed light on the nuanced elements that contributed to the enduring legacy of the 1972 TV series MASH. From casting decisions to the incorporation of real veterans' stories, each facet played a crucial role in shaping the show's unique appeal. As we wrap up this delightful journey through the timeless tapestry of that iconic television narrative, let the curtain fall not on a mere series, but on a cherished chapter of collective experience. M.A.S.H., a canvas painted with laughter, camaraderie, and the poignant hues of human resilience, beckons you to linger a moment longer in its embrace. As the curtain descends, take a posse the echoes of witty banter, the pulsating rhythms of the theme song, and the indelible moments of Hawkeye's irreverent wisdom to resonate within you. In this bittersweet symphony of war and wit, have you found a reflection of your own humanity? Did the characters, caught in the crucible of conflict, stir a familiar chord within your soul? Consider this not merely an outro, but an invitation to unveil the layers of your own narrative, interwoven with the fabric of M.A.S.H.'s narrative. What tales do you carry from the 4077th, where laughter was medicine, and friendships forged in the crucible of adversity? Were you, too, a silent spectator in the swamp, sharing in the humor and heartache of those who became more than characters on a screen? 
We implore you, kindred spirit, to share your anecdotes, your musings, your revelations. Let the comment section below become a communal campfire, where memories are shared, insights revealed, and the essence of MASH is magnified through the kaleidoscope of personal reflections. For now, we bid adieu with a heartfelt appreciation for your time and your journey through the anecdotes and echoes of the 4077th. Your presence has been the invisible thread stitching together this narrative, and for that, we are profoundly grateful. Until our next rendezvous through the realms of storytelling, we remain yours in the spirit of the 4077th, where humor was the armor and humanity the heartbeat.